So the weather is nice and I got a couple of hours to spare so I thought I'd pull out the dash cam rearview mirror that I had on my last truck and see if I could get it installed on this one. Uh, the mirror is a, an AWSAFE one. There's a new model available now but they're basically the same thing. You've got the camera itself which you can actually screw to the back of the mirror part and then mount right onto the glass or you can use these little straps and these little clips you you screw these to the back of the mirror and then with the little clips on either side you strap it over the existing mirror on your car truck um, I like the more OEM look of this so we're gonna be putting that back in it comes with both a, a front-facing camera and also a rear-facing camera that you could put on the back of a car or an SUV in my case, I mount it just over my rear brake light and I use it as a fifth wheel camera. It lets me uh, be able to see what I'm backing up to a little bit easier. Uh, lots of cable to run from front to back. And the only thing that I didn't like about it, but they all seem to be like this, uh, this is the power for the rearview mirror and it just goes into a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter adapter. Uh, so I want to keep it behind the dash. So I went ahead and ordered one of these and this way I'll be able to plug it directly into there and put it completely away so you're not seeing it. I'll put this on a switched power so that uh, so that it will shut off. Otherwise, the, the mirror will draw when you've got your key off. Uh, I might lose some memory settings doing that, but there's really nothing to set up each time. So we'll try it and we'll find out. So first thing to do is to get the stock mirror off the window and uh, we'll do that now. This part's actually really easy to do. There's just one screw right underneath here you just have to unscrew that and then this uh, there's a, a metal piece on the inside of the windshield and this sort of snaps onto it you just sort of have to tap it out of there I'll do that now it's just a three wire plug I'm guessing power ground and sensor. Um, I did check onto what this rear view mirror does now. Doesn't look like there's much in it except for the uh, automatic dimming for it. So you can see even though the screw is out it still sits there. There's a uh, right there. Just like that. So you'll see on the back of the mirror there's a sensor here. Uh, this is part of the chromatic dimming for the mirror. Um, if this sensor on the back of the mirror front of the truck gets covered, it will then activate this front sensor, which is up here right in the middle. Uh, if this one senses light in the middle of the day, then this one is deactivated. When it gets dark and this one does not have light, it activates this one here and then when this one sees lights from headlights behind you, cars behind you, that sort of thing, that's when it dims the mirror. So it's a two-part sensor system and uh, that's what the uh, the whole mirror seems to do. So it shouldn't really impact anything that I'm taking out the OEM mirror. Uh, I already ran it for several hours without that mirror plugged in just to see if any codes came up or any uh, trouble, um, anything on the dash came up to tell me that it didn't like it didn't get any complaints so I don't think it's going to be a big deal. So next we just slide the new mirror into place. Looks like this wants to come off first. Just like that. and then that slides in. So that's the mirror installed. There's some wiring to run, but your front camera, as soon as you powered this, your front camera would already work, and uh, the rest of the wiring is just to get the back working, so we'll do that next. I think what I'm gonna do is use the factory screw that came out of the old mirror, assuming it fits, uh, because the one that comes with it is just a Phillips, and I think I'm going to get it a little bit tighter with the Torx, so I'll just go get one of those and uh, I'll be right back. Use the handy little screwdriver they gave us with the mirror. Put 
that there. Don't over torque this, it'll be a, an expensive replacement. I think you're pretty good there. So I don't really want to get into playing with this factory plug here. I don't want to damage it and I've got lots of wire and no need to. So we're going to stuff that up out of the way here. Find a new home for it. And then we have two wires that need to be run. One goes to the back for the rear camera and the other one is power for the front camera so we're gonna start with the rear camera feed and it's really quite simple there's just a plug on top right there in the middle and your power is right beside it which is a of a, an old school USB and you just plug that in there and now we have our two wires so they basically will just hide right along the arm of the mirror there you can tuck them up inside and run them around the edge and I'll do that next so you don't really need to take the roof liner out for this there's a gap up there, and if you pull on it gently, you can get your wiring in there without any trouble. And I know it stays because I had it in my last truck for months, and never once did it come out. Okay, so as I was getting into this, I noticed the airbag's a little different on this one than it was on the other truck, so I'm actually going to take this A-post cover off and run the wire completely on the other side of the airbag so it doesn't interfere with it at all. That's really easy to do. There's just two caps on the handles here. Undo those bolts, take it out, and, uh, and you can do that easily. So I'm going to go get a tool for that. Oh, those ones are easy. They're just a 10 mil. forget to unplug the tweeter in the bottom of the A post if you have one. Now that I can see this, sorry, now that I can see this a little better, I can run this in a way that makes me feel better about it. You can put it right into the other electrical harness that's already there. Once you get in here, it's really very easy. The power wire, you want to get into the dash. And the rear camera wire, you want to run along the floor and go to the back. You could do it inside the roof liner too, but it's just easier inside the floor or along the edge of the floor here. All the panels just pop off. finish 
finish up that one. The rear one has a lot of extra cable, so in the last truck, and I'm going to guess it'll be the exact same size here, I just took the extra and hit it in the dash there. And then just kept on going around the edge. There's already a channel inside the floor here where the existing harness goes back. And you can just add to that. And once you're inside there, it lets you run through it all the way to the back. And it makes it a very easy install. you get into the back here you're gonna tuck it in and you need to get it up this post and across there to the brake light so I'm gonna go outside get that brake light off and uh, then we'll fish it up here and get it at the holder so the back lights actually really easy to do uh, just for torques they are um, of course I covered it up, I can't read it. I think that's a uh, T15 or T20. I'll find out. I'll put it in the video later. I got some paint on it, so I can't read it. There's lots of room to work here, so now that this is open, there's a great big hole right there. Move the camera so you can see. A great big hole right there which gets you down into the cab there's the top of the roof liner there so you're just gonna fish that cable up through and back out here I didn't uh, bother taking out the roof liner I just pushed it up in there and then with uh, any old pick tool or your finger there you go. One wire. Now let's go finish tidying up the inside and then we'll, we'll be back to do this. So when I got to this part, there's a couple of things. First of all, this red wire is for the automatic switching on your uh, backup lights. So if you put it into reverse, it'll automatically activate the camera. I don't want that. I'm just fine with my mirror. So this part is unused. I'll uh, get a twist tie in, or a zip tie in, and clean that up. The rest of it, you actually just need to plug in your camera wire here. It is keyed. There's a little dot on there, so you can't really screw it up. So that'll all go in there, and then we're going to stick this on. I'm just going to go and get a zip tie so I can tidy that part first. Just going down in there, as is the whole connection. The only part you need out is a little bit at the end here. And I'm just going to feed the camera through to the center section here. So that can go back on. Now, what you do here is really up to you. In my case, to give you screw holes and screws, I'm not putting more screws in the roof of my truck. Um, I actually inverted the bracket that was on here. 
because it was on the other way and it wouldn't let me bend it down far enough to see my fifth wheel. So I pulled off the bracket, screwed it back on the other way, and it lets me stick it right on the back of the window here just using some double-sided tape. And uh, I found that gave me the best view of what I wanted to see. And I'll just position it about there, and then we're going to put it all back together. And then just aim it for the middle as best you can, or measure it if you're pickier than I am. There's a little mark right on the middle of the light there that's good enough for me. And the screws that are there are tight, but not so tight that I can't still adjust it a little bit. Need your wire inside. Do those screws back up. And that's it for back here. It's fully connected. The only thing left is to put some power to it. So the only thing that's left is to run this power cable here. Um, one thing that I thought of, my truck did not come with the center mount or CHMSL, the center high mount stop light camera that goes in the back there. I'm actually okay with that because that taps into the truck's system and I don't think it records. The nice thing about the dash cam, this is front and rear and it records both front and rear at all times. You can take the data card out, that's nice and easy. And what I'm going to try to do is you can buy aftermarket um, stoplights that can go in that position and I'm going to see if I can find just the camera and tap it into this. It's just a, a two wire I'm going to guess and uh, I'm going to see if I can fit that right in there. I'll do that in a later video. But for this, I just want to get into the dash and I got to remember how this thing comes apart. The center section pops out. If you can get in there, I'm going to get a tool one second. I have a, a trim tool that I got on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. I'll put a link to the camera in the description too. Okay, so this one took a little bit of work because it's a different style of center speaker here. Uh, this is a 2020 F250 Tremor. I don't know uh, if it's just this truck, but uh, this center speaker doesn't look like the last one. And I thought for sure I was going to break it, but it does just pop out. And I'm still pretty sure I'm going to break it. Hopefully not. And I have not figured out. The old one had a couple of screws right in there to get this center section out. But I don't trust it. Because even here, there we go. Those just snap out now. Now there's probably a screw at the back here somewhere that's holding in the rest of this. I'm not too sure how hard I want to try and find that out. I can get at the screws I need to. There's one here and one here in order to get the centerpiece off. So I think that's what I'm going to try for right now. And uh, then we're going to just get down into here where we need to. You can see the rear clips back there, but the, the top section isn't attached to the bottom section very well. And I feel like you get into that too far, you're going to break that. So, that said, I think I'm just going to go with what I know. 
and just take those off. All right, so that is a seven mil. I'd have to try and get this top piece off because it's uh, kind of a pain. Yeah, I can see it's screwed in at the back, which means that's got to pop out. I'm going to try something else. Back. So this is the uh, install kit that I got on Amazon. It's got a lot of different pieces and it's done for every one of my projects lately. So with that, I'm going to see if I can pop these rear ones without breaking anything. One and two. There we go. And now I can get at those screws in the back. never done this before most of it feels like it's gonna break when you're taking it out only freaks you out a little bit you really only need to unclip the top ones here of course they're all basically the same size so just make sure they're not keyed the same no nope, they're not so can't really screw up putting it back together. Okay. So you can tap it right into your 12 volt if you want. Um, on the last truck, I just kind of kept it plugged in and never had any issues with battery drainage just because I used the truck often enough. If you're someone who lets your truck sit for a while, then I would suggest you don't run it in with 12 volt all the time. But there's my wire right there. That's what I want to get into. I've got a positive and a negative right there. I can tap into that with my 12 volt adapter here. And then I can just plug it in, put it back together, and I'm done. Right. Green is hot, and the uh, black with blue stripe is ground. This is black. I should have figured that one. Okay, so just to confirm, on the ground, and there we go. Okay, so we're gonna tap into those two and then put her back together. Okay. There we go. You can see the rear camera works. Looking at the mess in the end of the box there right now. Uh, no playback right now. I've got some cleanup to do because it's been a little while since I've used this. And there's our front camera. So we're all set. Now we just got to put this thing back together. So uh, I'll do that and I'll be back. I forgot to mention the reason that I put on an extra plug instead of just cutting the wire from this is uh, the company I got it from said that all warranties were voided. I guess 
being into the second truck at this point, it doesn't really matter. I'm probably past the warranty on it anyway. But this way here, I'm not cutting into a factory harness. It stays nice and clean, and I can just tap into this. So when that plugs in there, gives me everything I need, and we're all set. Okay, so here's the truck completely put back together. It's a little hard to see in a mirror there, but that's the, uh, the box that we're looking at there. I'm sort of getting video and reflection at the same time. Uh, there's a button there that lets you switch between front and rear cams. And I just gotta set the clock on it. There's a clock right on screen here. What's nice when you're on your front cam, you can adjust your brightness just by sliding back and forth on it. If I go all the way down here and back up. And you can also go up and down and change your angle, which is great on the rear camera because it lets you adjust for your fifth wheel even better. All in all, really happy with the camera on the last truck. I'm sure it'll be great here too. And uh, that's it. We're all done. So good luck.